My name is Tara Kutcher. I am 48 years old. I have an amazing husband and three daughters that are 26, 22, and 16 years old. I'm a retired nutritionist, registered nutritionist. I'm an organic livestock and many other things farmer. I'm a steward of the land, a lover of the land. And um, my husband and I raised our three daughters on a whole foods ancestral diet. And we continue to eat that way, to thrive on those foods, and hopefully encourage other people to do the same. This is all like the fertilizer of life, right? So this, we actually, I take a shovel, put it in a bucket, and all of that, especially rabbit poop, doesn't have to be composted. Cow and like that heavier poop, chicken, it does, but rabbit poop, I can take this and go right to my fruit trees and put it on the base of my fruit trees. Or I can go into the asparagus and put it there. It goes into my garden or wherever. This is like pure fertility from an animal that was only fed its natural diet, not from an animal that was fed kibble. How does that change their shit when they're fed kibble? Well, it changes it dramatically because it changes their gut biota, right? So anyway, that's the biggest part. And I like for us, we have no fertility if we don't have animals. So we have to keep animals. And that's actually the biggest thing they do for our farm is their, the fertility that they offer to the farm. It's them being on the land, fertilizing the land. When we got here, there hadn't been animals here for 35 years. And it's astonishing to see just in four years how much fertility has come back just because we're putting them on the land and then rotating them through the land, rotating them through the forest, rotating them through the grasslands. And they're eating, they're shitting, they're moving on and behind there's just the fertility is dramatically increased. Before it was just grass that was here and they're eating all these things and they're crapping out the seeds and it, yeah, it's just this uh, beautiful miraculous thing that can't be achieved without those animals. On our farm, we have some pigs that do their piggy thing in the forest. We have ducks that live on a pond and we have meat rabbits and turkeys and chickens and we have both meat and dairy cattle that are all just solely grass-fed including the dairy cattle and we raise our animals from when they're born until when they die. You know this idea that we can unplug from death, that we can not be a part of this horrible machine of death by opting out by not eating animals. To me, I believe that's a, a stunted thought. We get to the point of discomfort because something had to die for us to live. And so we stop there and decide, well, therefore I'm gonna back up and not eat whatever had to die for me to get there. Well, everything has death around it. Anything that's alive had to die for you to eat. We can say that the natural world has always had it figured out and that we can be in that system and we can mimic systems so that we can have food like with ruminants moving through and stuff like that. Or we can say, I don't like death, so I'm not going to eat things that had to die. And so I'm just going to eat foods that are not from an animal. Unfortunately, to do that, you have to destroy entire ecosystems to grow your food. And I cannot tell you about the amount of life that's around us right now. There's all sorts of birds, there's toads, there's snakes, there's bears back there, there's coyotes back there. And that's just the stuff on the surface. Like we're not even talking about what's going on in the soil and everything else that's around us. So in order for me to grow the food that will not kill anything, I'll have to kill all this. I'm gonna have to strip the soil. I'm gonna have to level everything out. I'm gonna have to steal water out of vast aquifers so that we can irrigate the shit out of this place because it's not gonna have any water retention possibility anymore. I am gonna take all the fertility out of the soil because to level this, I've gotta do that. I will end up with a moonscape. It's death in a plate, there's just no blood. It's the same thing times a million. It's much worse. It's not one animal that who lives a good life, who moves through within a biodiverse system, who contributes to that system the way that whoever created all this figured out long before us, much smarter than us, and that is, is contributing and is part of it just like we should be part of it. We should be part of this too. We're here, we're gone, and while we're here we need to be living as, as close as we possibly can to how we're supposed to be living and that includes our diets.